Conley was considered just an illiterate black man and questioned only as an afterthought. I visited the buddy in the saloon and went on back to the pool table and uh, saw three colored men shooting dice and I joined them. And, uh, in a sense, Jim Connolly was um, every man, every black man, in that he had spent his life having to learn how to work around white people. The southern stereotypes about the ignorant, bumbling black man played into his strengths. He was not dumb. He was not slow mentally at all. He was very smart. I swear for God and I have, I, I don't know a thing. What, do you know how to write? No, sir. I, 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 I don't. I never, never could. Will you swear that? I sure will. They asked him about the notes. He said, I can't read and write. That happened to come up in a conversation between the police and Frank. And Frank said, of course he can write. I know he can write. He used to borrow money from me and sign promissory notes. So Connolly had not been completely honest with the police. Do you know the penalty for perjury? What's perjury? Swearing a lie. But I ain't gonna swear no lie. You will if you swear you can't write. Recognize the signature, Jim. Why, right, folks, I'm a liar. The detectives were completely satisfied that he couldn't have come up with this story on uh, out of his imagination, this ignorant darky, um, who must now finally be telling the truth after skillful interrogation by these Atlanta policemen. That's where I come in. Though the state was going after Leo Frank, I figured Jim could use a lawyer. William Smith's a very unusual guy for that time. He represented a lot of black clients, and he did so because he actually had a real belief in equal justice for blacks. I believe that Frank was the guilty man, and Jim Conley, at most, an accessory. But I feared that with unlimited funds, Frank's defense might find a way to blame it on Jim. <laughs> 